So today I wanted to show you a little bit of some Java graphics. I wanted to find something that was a little bit more interesting to code than just your straight uh, business application kind of kind of programs. And uh, plus, when you do graphics, you can kind of see what's going on visually, and it's I, I really enjoy them. So that's what I wanted to show you. Okay, so now when you do when you draw graphics with code in Java, um, you use kind of like a math grid only it's a little different. So here's an example of a window. And zero, the position zero, zero starts in the upper left corner, whereas in math, it's right dead center, right? Well, then as you go along the x-axis, the numbers get bigger, just like in math. And you can even go off the screen. I think I have the default window set to 800 by 500, which is why I have this graphic to kind of show you what's going on. So if you get to 900, it's going to be off the screen. It'll still draw. Now, same thing if you go negative, if you draw anywhere in the negatives over here, it's going to just be off screen. Then here's where it's different. When you go down in math, usually the numbers go into the negatives, but here they're positive, and as if you go up, they're negative. So the math grid is like quadrant, what is that, quadrant four or something? I'm sorry, I'm not very good with math here, um, but, but all numbers are positive. All right, so let's kind of show you what I have for you. Um, I have a, some Java skeleton code. It's called window.java. And the only code we have to understand is this code above this dotted line right here. Everything else, you're welcome to look through it. All it is is it's code to create a window and add the title and do a timer and, and do some events and stuff like that. It just makes your code work. All right, so here we have a few import statements, and that's just some import statements to create the window. We don't really have to, have to deal with those at this point. Um, I'm sure once you get into a higher programming class, they'll go more into detail. Then we have a class called MyCode. This is just a container where you're going to put all of your code. But we're going to break it down a little further. Uh, there's an init, which stands for initialize, and here's where you put any code you want to happen before the program loads. We're not dealing with it today, don't worry, but let's just put a comment in, in some of these to kind of let you know what each of them are for. So you're going to say code to that runs before the program loads. That's what this init is. Now, anytime you want to do graphics, you're going to put them in draw. There's our code to draw graphics. Um, now, there's what's called events in Java. So if the user presses a button or clicks or does any sort of movement, we can track it. In this case, this is any time the user presses the mouse on the, the one of the mouse buttons, it will activate this event. And so th you'll put any code here that you is a response to a mouse press. Code to respond to a mouse press. And now here's, this is the same. Um, but for anything on the keyboard, if they press a key or if they um, hit the space bar, something like that. And this is, this is the code for the keyboard. It's public void key press. <coughs> now the last, the, the last uh, code section we're going to go through is this timer. This is just a uh, code that, it, that is activated on a fixed interval. I think it's a half second. I'm pretty sure it's a half second. It's in milliseconds, but I get those mixed up. All right, so code executes every half second. Okay, then we have a couple of settings that you can change. We have the window width and the window height. As I said, I have the default set to 800 by 500. You can change that if you want. If you want it to go bigger, you can just change that to 900 or what have you. And it'll change the size of your window. Then this right here is the title in the title bar. Let's kind of show you where that is at. So the title in the title bar is just what appears up here in the window. And when you compile and run your project, it uh, actually creates this window. Um, so now let's show you some graphics. Okay, the first one we're going to do is just a straight up rectangle. I'm going to make it look like this. Now, for a rectangle, we want to set the color to what you want. So that's what we're going to do first. So th since we're drawing graphics, we're going to put this in this draw method. And that's the only one we're going to deal with today. So don't worry about it. Um, so uh, my graphics gives me this little graphics object called G. So I'm going to use that G to draw the graphics. So I'm going to say G dot set color, color dot red. 
Now, most there's a, several of these colors that you could show that are built in. Um, there's red, there's green, there's blue, there's cyan. Some of them there are like uh, there's not that many. Um, you can kind of look up and just say Java colors and they'll give you a list of them, but I'll show you another way to do color. Okay, so now to draw the rectangle, um, I'm going to come on my axis, it's 200 over, and on my y axis, it's 100 down. So the coordinates are going to be 200 by, by 100. So I'm going to say g, yeah, if I can put the cursor on there, g dot. Okay, now you can do draw rect. And that just draws the outline. Or you could do fill rect, and that will draw a filled in rectangle. It will draw the outline and fill it in. So I'm going to fill this in, and I said what, 200, 100. The next thing we need is the width and the height. So if I count over here, each of these are 20 pixels, so I can go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 140, 140 and 40 high. So this is the width, it's 100, and these are in pixels, by the way. Oops, I didn't mean to get that bracket up there. 140 wide, and the pixels are just little dots on the screen, pretty small. Um, I think that graphic on the, my website is approximately accurate. Approximately, not exactly. All right, so there we go. So there's my fill rect. And now if I run this again, I should see the exact rectangle. Oh, what did I do differently? I did 400 instead of 40. Sorry, it was looking kind of weird there. There we go. Now it should be more accurate. It's like, whoa, my rectangle is huge. Okay, so there is my rectangle. And as I said, if we change it to just draw, and any of these commands will work with just draw, um, then it will just draw the rectangle outline instead of the entire thing filled in. There it is. Okay, so now let's show you how to change the color to something different. You can say g.setColor. I'm going to grab paint really quick for those of you who have paint. Those of you who don't, don't worry about this. I'm just going to kind of show you um, what this is. This is Paint, MS Paint in Windows. If you hit Edit Colors, you could pick any color. Let's bring that a little lighter, and, and it will give you these RGB values. Well, you can use those values to choose a color. So here I have, I'm going to do colors I can easily remember. Um, let's do 100. It might be an ugly color, but at least you'll get the idea. 50, uh, 25. Okay, so we got some sort of brown. There we go. That's the color I'm going to do. 150, 25. Remember those colors, because I probably won't. <coughs> 150, 25. 150, 25. Got to, got to remember that. Um, okay, so now if I want to do a custom color, I'm going to say G dot set color, new color. Was it 150? 25. Now, if I run this, it's, and we look at it, it's still red. It didn't change it. And the reason why is because the color only affects the commands that follow the, the set color command. So if I put something here, it's going to be whatever color that is. Okay, so let's do some sort of oval. So I'm going to say g dot uh, draw. I'll just do a fill this time. How do you spell oval? A-L or E-L? I can't ever remember that one. Okay, I'm going to put this kind of next to it. So let's go back to my little graphic there so I can kind of see where to put this. Let's go, um, I'll go 400 over, 100 down. All right, so I'm going to do this. 400 over, 100 down. Then I'm going to do the width and height. Let's do a circle. So I'll, I'll go 100, 100. Okay. So now if I run this, you're going to see that we have that brown color. There's our brown color. And it is a circle because it's the same width as height. But that 400, 100, that's up here. It's the upper left corner of the shape. And so it's not actually on there. Um, it just gives you the upper left corner of the shape. Okay, a couple other ones you can do. I'll give you a list. Um, there we go. 
So we've done oval, we've done, if you notice, there's a draw and a fill for each. A rounding one, a rounded rect is the same thing. You have an int, an x, a y, a width, and a height. But here they have an additional one, an additional two settings for the, the rounding of the, of the corners. Let's change our rectangle into a draw rounded rectangle or a, or a fill rounded rectangle. So here if I saw draw rect, we can change that to rounded rect. And then now we have to add a couple of things for the rounding. So maybe I want it to round, okay, so if it is 140 pixels wide, let's have it round 20 on the X and just 10 on the Y. So now if I run this, you'll notice the X is gonna be a little bit more, ah, dang it, draw a rounded rect. Now what did I do? Did I draw round, excuse me, not ED. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so now my ha my rectangle has some rounding and it's there's 10 pixels on the Y and 20 pixels on the X. So that is a rounded rect. Okay. Um, draw string just draws text. I give an example of the X and Y is just where the X and Y is. And I do have an example of a polygon. A polygon has uh, you have an X and Y coordinate of all of the points. So here, if I have, I would, I, and you have to do it in order, like counterclockwise or clockwise, doesn't matter. On this example, I do, here's one point, here's one point, here's one point, here's one point, one point here. So I have all of the X's in order with 200, 220, 220, 180, 180. There's all of my X's. Then here's all of the Y's, and they have to match, so these correlate with these. And then to actually draw it, I put in, uh, my X coordinates, my Y coordinates, and then the five represents how many points you have. So if you want to draw a triangle, you're going to put three points here. Uh, if you want to draw like some sort of six figure, and it has to match this, th the number of points here and here. Okay, so that's how you draw a polygon. It's just any shape that's not a rectangle or a circle is a polygon. Okay, the last one, a little bit more confusing, is this draw arc and fill arc. Okay, so if we want to draw an arc, you once again, you have the X, the Y, the width, and the height, but then you have the start angle and the end angle. Let's just kind of show you, and I don't have a great example, so I'm going to pull out paint again. Okay, so here is a circle. In a circle, you have coordinates. So it starts off as this is zero degrees. This up here is 90 degrees. That makes this is 180 degrees, and then what is this one? 360 is over here, so what's this, 270? 270, okay, and then you have anything in between. So this is gonna be approximately 45 over here, and over here we have whatever 90 plus 45 is. You know, this is, this is the angles that it's gonna expect. So if we wanted something to start, and we wanna draw Pac-Man, we can start here, let's see, let's draw, get a, a line so we can kind of come out of what we're going to draw. If we want, we could do, yeah, let's go here. So if we wanted to draw an arc here, I didn't want to do that line. I wanted to do this line, didn't I? Uh, it would start here and it would come around, I believe it comes around clockwise, but we'll see here in a minute if this works or not. And then let's end like right here at 270. So that'd be straight down really. So it's going to be this weird lopsided Pac-Man looking thing. All right, so I'm going to do a draw arc just so we could see. I'm going to leave the color just to keep it e easy. I'll do a fill too. So I'm gonna come, where Where do we have things? Um, 200 over, 400 over, we could go 600 over, that's still on screen, and I'll go 100 down. We'll make the width and height kind of op lopsided, so I'll do uh, 50 across and 100 down. My starting arc, I decided I wanted it to be at 45. All right, so my starting arc is 45. My ending arc is actually the length of the, the size. So it's what, what's 180 plus 45? I can't think in my head while recording a video at the same time. All right, so 180 plus 45 is 225. Uh, so here I'll do 225. 
that's my ending arc. Put a little semicolon in, run this, so you can kind of see this is the last thing I'm doing. Sorry, this video is kind of long. There we go. This is a weird Pac-Man-ish looking. It starts at 45, goes all the way around. What did I say? How much is that? 225. And so it finishes down at the bottom. Um, you can also do the same thing if you wanted to just draw the arc once again. Now it's just going to draw that particular line. Let's run this one more time and show you the last thing. So here we go. That X, that 600, 100, once again, that's the upper left corner of where each of the tops would be. So that point is not actually the middle. It's the upper left corner of the shape. And then you have X and then you have Y. There's my starting arc. There's my ending arc. It just draws the outline this time. Well, good luck with the homework ex assignment. Let me know if you have any questions or issues with coding Java graphics.